Sean, thank you. We begin this morning talking about a 12 year old who had to spend the night behind bars. Well, his family says it was a terrible case of mistaken identity that the police made, and now they are ready to sue. News 13's Lizzie Mitri reports. The arrest warrant affidavit names another boy with a similar name, and now police are trying to figure out if they arrested the wrong teen or put the wrong name on the paperwork. 12 year old Marcus Lewis seen here in our FaceTime interview says he was walking home from a friend's house in Clovis around 730 two days ago when a police officer stopped him. He asked for my name and I gave it to him and then he looked me up and he told me to step by his car and I had a warrant. Marcus says he doesn't have a warrant out for his arrest, but Clovis police took him to the juvenile detention center for the night. They made me go take a shower and put on the clothes and then uh, I guess they booked me in. It was scary, I guess. Um, it was loud. Marcus's stepdad was upset and confused when he heard the news. I got a phone call from the jail saying that, hi, we have your son, Marcus Lewis. He's been arrested. Um, we're not sure what for. But after looking at the affidavit for arrest warrant, he says police had the wrong teenager. Police say the officer arrested Marcus for a February charge of marijuana possession with intent to distribute at Marshall Middle School. Except Marcus was still in elementary school at that time. Whenever that warrant was made, which was February 27th, 2013, he was still attending James Bickley Elementary. And there's more. It has Marcus's name, his address, and his birthday. But the social's different. Like at the top, like that's not his social security number. Not to mention the name used in the description of the February marijuana incident is not Marcus's, but another very similar name. And it's like such a blatant mistake. I mean, my son, first of all, you should do more homework on someone before you arrest them. The family has already gotten a lawyer. They say they want to sue the city for wrongful arrest and false imprisonment. Liz Amy Tree, KRQE News 13. Police are still looking into what happened here. The Clovis police chief says if they did make a mistake, they do want to correct it. Well, with 2013 behind them, a few New Mexico's politicians are getting ready for a battle for the governor's office and getting ready to raise some money. Even though the race is 11 months away, it could set records for campaign spending. Last election, Santa Martinez and Diane Dennis shelled out about $7 million in campaign cash, mostly on these TV ads. Four years before that, Bill Richardson dropped about $12 million to win in a blowout over challenger John Dendel. There will be limits on campaign contributions this year, but some say that really won't make a difference. If it's a competitive race, I think we're going to see upwards. We could even get into discussions about $20 million, I think, in terms of overall spending. That's because outside groups can and will pour in millions of dollars. This is particularly true if the race is close. Now, of those opposing Governor Martinez, Attorney General Gary King is reported to have the most money. This is from his October campaign cash report, where he had a little less than 150 grand. The New Mexico County, whose clerk quit when the state Supreme Court ruled same-sex marriage to be legal, has now issued its first same-sex marriage license. Roosevelt County Clerk. Donna Carpenter resigned, saying she objected to issuing marriage licenses to gay couples because she did not want to violate what she said was God's law. The chief deputy, Janet Collins, also resigned. Now the county commission quickly appointed a new clerk last week. She issued the first license on Monday afternoon. The same-sex couple who got that first license said they'd no, they had no idea they would actually be the first. A state legislator here in New Mexico wants to give all of us an incentive to conserve water. Senator Peter Worth has already introduced a bill in the Roundhouse to do this. It allows people and businesses to apply for a $5,000 income tax credit if they install a water harvesting system this year. There's a lot of support for this plan, but there's also some people who are against it. Farmers in the southern part of the state worry if too much water stays up north, they won't get enough for their fields. Everything from costumes down to the dance floor were destroyed after flames consumed the National Flamenco Institute a couple of weeks ago. You recall what happened here. Look at this. How can you forget the sight of this fire? Now the downtown dance organization is now rising up from the ashes and looking toward the future. The dance space has received donations from the community, including office equipment and space to hold classes, even receiving about 10 grand in cash donations. I mean, and the kind of message that was coming from the community is, you know, flamenco lives within us and, and yes, we lost this home, but 
will start to rebuild now. But unfortunately, the one thing that cannot be easily replaced is the unique one-of-a-kind flamenco costumes. But the group remains optimistic, looking and planning for 2014. The New Year's party start a little earlier for some folks in Albuquerque. Uh, they celebrated earlier yesterday for New Year's Eve at the Downs Racetrack and Casino. Instead of a countdown to midnight, they did it early and got one to go down to noon. This is for people who aren't able to or don't or choose not to stay up past midnight to ring in the traditional New Year's Eve to have an opportunity to celebrate it around family, friends and other uh, people who are seeking similar entertainment. That looks like a good time there. They also had music by the popular artist Gonzalo. That's pretty cool. I like the whole yeah. idea of celebrating during the day. It's what I did. Yeah, that's what I did too. <laughs> <laughs>